welcome to the program and thanks for joining me. Thank you for having me, Christian. I'm happy to be here. Well, let me ask you first about your reaction to the international plan between the United States and Russia to seize Syria's chemical weapons and destroy them. Does that satisfy you? Does that satisfy Israel? Well, it's too early to tell. I mean, um, I think we have just uh, proved again, the international community has just proved again, that if you want to negotiate, you'll better have a big stick in your hand, or in this case, a big tomahawk in your hand, and then you can negotiate. This is, I mean, it's, it's the Middle East. You have to have uh, sticks with the carrots. Uh, it's too early to say if this will succeed. What we need is to, for all chemical weapons to be removed from Syria. When this will happen, I will tell you it's a great success. Until this is happening, we're still looking at it. So you talk about the big stick. So are you satisfied that the United States will keep the threat of force on the table. Obviously, Secretary Kerry has briefed Prime Minister Netanyahu about the plan. You satisfied that that stick will remain there? Mr. Secretary John Well, I, I think it was proven uh, once and once again that unless there is a credible threat, the old, all the negotiation are becoming are, are, are just empty words. So, so the fact that this is still on the table and, and this time this is agreed upon with, with Russia and the United States is, is, is uh, a good thing and essential for, for the progress of all this process. We, we need to have, I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, this is not over. It won't be over until uh, all weapons of mass destruction will be out of Syria. Then we will know this whole move has succeeded. Obviously, there are huge challenges ahead. What is the most important issue for Israel right now over this Syria crisis? Well, I think... There are two issues. One issue is the fact that I think no country on the world wants to know that they have on their border a regime, a dictatorship, which is dangerous in the middle of a, of a, of a civil war and willing to use uh, um, weapons of mass destruction. And we want to have those removed. So this is number one. Number two is, of course, everybody's looking of the kind of signals the international community and especially the United States are signaling us and especially to Iran. Iran also have to know that the world, the, world, the, com the international community, the United States will not be silent when, when, when regimes and dictatorships are gathering uh, uh, weapons of mass destruction and uh, while intending to use them. Mr. Lapid, what do you make then of the new Iranian president who has been very vocal and public about wanting to uh, have a foreign policy that is more moderate, those are his words, less extremist, those are his words, and also uh, willing to talk about the nuclear program? Does that, I mean, are you eager to see what he has to say or are you just dismissing it uh, as just more rhetoric? I'm happy for a different vocabulary. But I want to see what's happening. Since this uh, uh, president came into power, since Rouhani came into power in Iran, they've already built 7,000 new centrifuges. 1,000 of them are from the upgraded new uh, um, um, kind of machinery. So uh, when this will stop, when the, the reactor in Qom will be closed, when they will stop enriching uranium, when, when they take off the uranium, enriched uranium they already have, then we can discuss the fact whether we can all hold hands and sing uh, hallelujah together. So again, I'm, I'm happy to listen to any new music coming from your Iran, but this has to be backed by not only by words, but also by deeds. So uh, a hallelujah, new music must have been uh, interesting to your ears then over Rosh Hashanah when the president's office tweeted a happy new year to Jews all over the world and when the foreign minister himself tweeted a happy new year to Jews all over the world. Well, of course, of course I'm, I, I rather have people tweeting me happy Rosh Hashanah or happy new year instead of tweeting that they are, I don't know, Holocaust deniers uh, uh, as it, it was before. But we, we, we have to be more careful than that. As I was saying, is this the real thing? Yeah, I, don't, I don't want to be sour about everything, but is this the real thing? Because if deeds contradicts the words, then we have to believe the deeds, not the words. I'm sure you'll agree with me on this. Let's now talk about the Middle East peace process between Israel and the Palestinians. Secretary Kerry has just been there. You know that he has taken it on maybe as a personal mission to try to get this peace process back on track. Zippy Livni has been named the chief negotiator for the Israeli government. She's the justice minister. And yet... There seems to be deep pessimism that this 
idea of a two-state solution may be an idea whose time is come and gone. What do you think right now? Well, I like low expectations. I want to keep low expectations. The best things are happening when we have low expectations. And in, in a way, I wish this to continue a little while at least. Uh, I, because I, I think we should uh, uh, make great, good use of the, of the time. There's a time frame of nine months, and I think we should make good use of this time frame because this is also an adjusting period for everybody, as I think that whatever the agreement will be, it will need an adjusting period in terms of implementing it. So, uh, so the fact that everybody is going around and telling each other, you know, this is not going to work, this is not going to happen, is actually a good thing for everybody who feels the way, strongly the way I do, that the two-state solution is the only solution when we should progress more in this peace process. On the details of this, we have all agreed upon uh, uh, the, the concept in which uh, Secretary Kerry is the only one who is uh, talking to the press about uh, uh, the nitty-gritty of, 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 of the process, so we're going to leave it this way. You know, you are Minister of Finance, and as we look at uh, Israel's economy, it's obviously done a lot better in these crisis years than many other economies. Uh, when it comes, though, to the central bank, to the Israel central bank, you and the Prime Minister have failed to put in place a new governor since Stanley Fisher stepped down in June. Why? What's taking so long? Several candidates were, didn't work out. Why can't you get that act together? Well, this is a fine example to the fact that, you know, comedies are just, just tragedies in fast forward. We, 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 have, uh, we, we, we have managed to uh, choose two candidates who, who turned out to be the wrong candidates to de and, and decided to, to withdraw. And now uh, it's going to take a, a few, few days or weeks more and we're going to have a government of central bank. We have the right people on the right place. It is, I mean, this is folklore and it's, it's, it's colorful enough to, to, make, to, 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 to be interesting. Okay, well, who do you think will be the central bank governor? Give me another name. Well, it's, we have a few names on the table and, and we will discuss this. <laughs> well, this, I'm sorry, but this, this has become the holy grail of all uh, uh, economical reporters in Israel, so we're not selling this yet. Oh, my goodness. Okay. Well, how about... But it was a nice try. It was a nice try. Well, then let me close by asking you and turning the tables a little bit on you. When you had your television show, you would end each episode with a quiz, and you would ask each and every one of your guests, Israeli or, or, or from other places, what symbolizes Israel for you? So what does symbolize Israel for you today? Well, I, I'm going to choose the corniest answer that everybody gave me, which is my children. I have three children, and, and whenever I look at them, I, I, I see the reason why is it that I'm doing what I'm doing. And you know what? One, part of the things that happened to me in the move from uh, uh, journalism to the public arena is I lost most of, if not all, my cynicism. I'm, I'm, I, I mean, I was, everybody's a bit cynic when he's in the media. I'm not anymore. Yeah, Lapid, thank you very much indeed for joining me. Thank you.